been fishing all my life, left school after doing my exams, went straight to the fishing aboard my father and uncle's boat. It was the only job I ever wanted to do. It gave me a decent enough lifestyle. It's not a job for everybody. It's, you need a bit of grit and determination. Well, I think my father took me to the sea when I was about six or seven year old for the first time one night and got hooked. That's the only way you can describe it. I absolutely loved the job. It takes a lot to be a fisherman, it does. It's something that, to, to be born and bred into it, is different from coming to the job. If you, you're born and bred into it, it's, it, 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 it's part of your life. You grow up when your father's at sea that he's not at home all the time. Fishermen used to be proud people when you met them in the street. Nowadays, they're, they're not respected the same in the community. They're not respected the same, but we still do it. We're still living, we're still fighting. The reward of the job, as I say, when you have a good trip, and you come home and you have a good wage packet and the, the boys have got a good wage packet, everybody's happy. And then maybe the next week or a month later, you get poor weather, you get the wrong type of conditions, things are maybe going wrong on the boat. It can be soul destroying. It, you have really got to search for your, the inner strength to make the job what you want. I had an incident last year actually that I got caught up in one of the nets and dragged over the side. I was very lucky the crew that I had at the time were very switched on, were very clued up and no last, no, I, I didn't lose any limbs or any lasting damage but it can be scary, it can just bring everything into reality that you're not invincible. Some people have lost limbs, some people have lost lives, but there's still men willing to go to the job and take that risk. 25 years ago when I started fishing, the harbour was down in air and we had a large fisherman's mission down there and there was bedrooms and pool tables, snooker tables and all, and there was a canteen. The harbours don't have to cater for that facility nowadays. But having the, the mission there that, as I say, you can jump, you come in one night and if you're feeling tired, if you're rough day and you maybe get filthy, you can jump up and grab a shower. The showers are open 24 hours. The centre's open 24 hours. A lot of people don't know how lucky we are to have the, the centre there. The boys can jump off the boat for an hour or two at night and sit down watch a bit of telly in peace and quiet without an engine running, without the gulls squawking. And the whole facilities are there for anybody, seven days a week. As I said, when everything's running fine and there are big catches going in, it's great. But when something happens, whether it be that it's helping the foreign boys out, maybe with bank accounts or some visa paperwork, or if it comes to there's maybe been a fatality, an injury aboard the boat, the mission superintendents are there, and it's not until you know you, they're there, when you know you need them, that you, rec you, you recognise the, the work that they do. Without donations, would we have a fisherman's mission? We, we have charities for cancer research and all the other kinds, but to actually have a charity to assist fishermen or fishing families in times of need is a big bonus for the British industry.